Salutation, Circuit Pythonistas. It's Prof. Gene, and this lesson we'll get our Circuit Playground blue fruits to light up in various colors. We'll work with libraries, learn about RGB colors, and write our first infinite loop, a while true loop. Let the big learning begin. So, Pythonistas, if you completed our prior lesson where we learned the print command, then when you enter Moo with your CPB plugged into your computer, and just to make sure that our screens look the same, you can close any open programs by clicking the X in the tab, then click the Load button, navigate to your CircuitPy volume, then find and click code.py, open it in Moo, then click the Serial button to open the Serial Console, click Save, this will re-execute your program, and you should see a screen that looks like this. Now let's light up our CPB. First, let's highlight and delete the program that we've just written. And then after the pound sign, I'm going to put in the comment that says, light it up. And now we're going to enter some lines of code. And these three lines of code that we're going to enter are three lines that you can use anytime you want to work with the 10 built-in lights that are on your CPB. Now, the first line we're going to write is import board. Now, Python itself doesn't know about the features of our CPB microcontroller. But by saying import board, we extend the CircuitPython language so that it has statements and capabilities to work with this board. In fact, import board has information on any of the boards that can run CircuitPython. So if we use another board like an Arduino Nano RP2040 or the Raspberry Pi Pico W, the board library knows what that board can do. And we'll explore this more in a future video. Now below that, we have the statement import NeoPixel. That's also all in lowercase. Now this statement adds additional features into the Python language so that we can work with and control NeoPixel lights. Now NeoPixel is Adafruit's term for a certain type of LED light that can shine in any color. There happen to be 10 of these NeoPixel lights built into the CPB. Some boards have one NeoPixel light, some don't have any, and the board library knows which boards have lights and how to connect to them. But even if we were working with a strip or strand of NeoPixel lights that was connected externally to the board, you'd still import NeoPixel because this library has all of the commands we need to work with NeoPixel lights. Now in the line below that, we type in pixels, all lowercase, and an equal sign. Now pixels is the name that we're using to refer to the group of 10 lights that are on our CPB. And after the equal sign, we'll put in the code that we use to set up and configure those lights. Now we don't have to call these lights pixel. We could use any name. We could call our lights Jennifer or Lady McLightface. But pixels is a good name. You'll see a lot of examples that use the name pixels, so we'll use it here. Now this name pixels is what programmers refer to as a variable. It's a variable because we can make changes or vary the contents of the data inside. And we'll do this in later videos where we do things like changing the brightness of the lights. And if it helps you, you can think of a variable as a sort of box that holds data. And anytime we use the name pixel, we can get at the contents of that box. Now after the equal sign is where we set up the contents of that box named pixels. And we just have to do this once at the start of our program. So we do that by typing neopixel dot all lowercase and there are no spaces before or after the dot. And notice that this this word NeoPixel is spelled the same way with the same capitalization as our import NeoPixel statement up here. Now what we're saying is, go into that NeoPixel library that we just imported. Now the dot says, refer to a special capability of the NeoPixel library. And after that dot, we type in the word NeoPixel again, but very important, it has different capitalization. It's all one word with a capital N and a capital P, and it's important to get that capitalization right because if you get it wrong, your code won't work. Now writing NeoPixel this way says, hey, go into that NeoPixel library and use this NeoPixel blueprint spelled this way. It's defined in the library, and that's used to set up a bunch of lights that we can control in our program. Now as you journey forward in becoming a programmer, you've got to learn some key terms. In computing, we refer to the blueprint to set something up like this as the class. So in this example, NeoPixel, capital N, capital P, is our class or blueprint for creating a variable that allows us to control NeoPixel lights. And and we refer to that variable created using the class or blueprint as an object. Sometimes we say that an object is an instance of a class. That's what pixels are here. So class, NeoPixel, capital N, capital P, is our blueprint. Pixels is the name we've given to the variable that holds the object created from that blueprint. And in this case, that object pixels is going to allow us to control the 10 lights on our circuit playground. Now, this is important because we're going to use the same NeoPixel class in a future lesson to also set up a different set of lights, an LED light strip. Not to get too far ahead of us, but you'll see we'll use the same NeoPixel class, but we're going to pass in a different location for the lights and a different number of the lights, and we'll give it a different name. Instead of calling it pixels, we'll call it strip. Now, after this class, we'll add parentheses and we'll pass in any values that the blueprint needs in order to set up the lights. Now, in this case, we're going to pass in two values separated by commas. 
First is board, lowercase, dot, and in all capitals, NeoPixel. Now this means go into the board library and find that unchanging spot where we can refer to the built-in NeoPixels. By the way, Python is super fussy about getting capitalization right, but this can confuse new students because we have some words that are in all caps, some that are in mixed caps, and some that are in all lowercase. Well, the reason for that is there are different conventions or styles that programmers use for different types of data or data structures. So briefly, the standards are any values that are supposed to be unchanged and remain constant should be written in all capital letters. So since this refers to NeoPixel lights that are permanently on our NeoPixel board and they can't be changed, the name NeoPixel that you see here is written in all caps. Another convention is to write class names like NeoPixels here as one word, but with a capital letter at the start of each of the sort of words inside of the word, like capital N Neo, capital P Pixels. That's referred to as the upper camel case style, since the capital letters look sort of like the humps of a camel. Now you'll also notice the convention is for variables like pixels or function names like print to be written in all lowercase letters. And in later lessons, we'll see some variables have more than one word like auto underscore right here. The convention is to use an underscore to separate the words and that style is called snake case. Now after board.neopixel, we put in a comma and we're gonna put in the number 10. That's because we have 10 NeoPixels or LED lights built into the CPB. If we were using an external light strip that had 30 lights, we'd put a 30 in here. Now for a new programmer, that might seem like a gnarly bit of code, but here's the good thing. As long as you're working with the CPB, and this code also works with the Circuit Playground Express, if you wanna set up and start working with those 10 lights on the board, you can copy and paste this code into any program and it'll be good to go. It's almost like working with a software Lego. So now let's head back to Moo and type in exactly what we saw in the previous slides. Import board will always import a board library whenever we work with a microcontroller. For us, our board is the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Then import NeoPixel will always import this library whenever we work with colorful lights. Then I'll add a blank space below this to space things out. That's the name I'm giving to the variable that holds the object that I can refer to in my code whenever I want to work with the lights on my Circuit Playground board. Then I'll set this equal to lowercase NeoPixel, so I go up into this library that I imported here, dot NeoPixel with a capital N and capital P. That's the class or blueprint that I'm gonna to use to set up the LED lights. Then in between parentheses, I pass in the values I wanna use on my NeoPixel class or blueprint to set up the lights on my circuit playground. And then I'll type in the two arguments, lowercase board dot in all caps NeoPixel. So when we imported board up here, that included information where we can find the 10 lights on the circuit playground. Instead of having to use some obscure electrical engineering term or numbers to get to the lights, we just refer to board dot NeoPixel. Thanks board library. Then we add comma 10 since we have 10 lights in the NeoPixel object that we're creating and then close parentheses. Now here's an important point about Python. It's very particular about spelling, capitalization, spaces. You wanna make sure that you don't have any extra spaces in there. Your parentheses are important. There should always be a matching close parenthesis for every open parenthesis. Even the indentation of your code is important and we'll see that in later examples. So if Python is expecting your code to be formatted and spelled in a particular way, and if it's not, then your code won't work. So it's super important to be extra detail oriented whenever you're entering code. So now these first three lines we've entered are all about the setup. Now to get the lights to do something, we're gonna type in this line. Now this line says, go into those lights that we just referred to as pixels, all 10 of them, and fill them with a color. The pixels part says, hey, those are our 10 lights. Remember, we set this variable up with this line up here. We only need to do that once at the start of our program. The dot fill is a special command. Programmers refer to this as a method. This method will fill in the lights that we refer to in the left-hand side, so those are all of our pixel lights. And in between the parentheses, we specify a color. Now there's another set of parentheses and we have three numbers in there. Those numbers represent the red, green, and blue mix of colors that we'll use to fill in our lights. Now by mixing different quantities of red, green, and blue, we can produce just about any color in the spectrum. Now the way we're gonna represent colors is in between these parentheses, we'll have three numbers from zero to 255. Zero means no color, 255 means as much of that color as possible. So what we're showing here with 255 in the first position, the red position is make that fully red, and then the green is zero and the blue is zero. So this is gonna light up all of our lights as red. So when we press on the save button after entering this line, our code's gonna be saved, it'll start executing again from the beginning, and all 10 lights on our CPB are gonna turn red. Now we are gonna run into a bit of problem with this code, but we'll see how we can solve it using something called the while true loop. 
So now let's return to Moo and enter that line. So on our new line, we'll type in pixels.fill, open and close parentheses. And inside those parentheses, we'll put a new set of open and close parentheses. That's what you've got to do whenever we represent a color. And we'll type in 255, comma, zero, comma, zero. That's red. Then keep an eye on your CPB while we click on our save button and... Whoa, what happened so fast you might have missed it, but the lights flashed in red really quickly and then they went out. What went on here? Well, what happened is the program started executing from start to finish, and when it was done, the lights shut off. The program isn't running anymore. Let's try to fix that, and we'll fix that by getting our program to continue to stay on by repeatedly executing statements over and over again after we've turned on the lights. Now, most of the time when we write CircuitPython code, we want a portion of our code to run continuously, waiting for some input, maybe a button to be pressed, or to read a sensor. So we'll create a piece of our program to repeat forever and not stop unless we stop the program or cut power to the CPB. Now we call this constantly repeating part of our program an infinite loop, since it will loop or repeat itself over and over again until it's stopped. Now the most common way to write an infinite loop is with this statement. The word while, all lowercase, followed by the word true with a capital T, then a colon. Now the while statement checks to see if any condition after this while word is true. Now in the future you might see some code with some math in here that evaluates a statement that could be true or that could be false. And if it's false it won't perform the code that's indented after the while statement. But by saying while true we say while true is true. Which sounds weird but since true is always true we perform all the code that's indented after the while true forever and ever and ever. Now when we press return, look what happens. Moo indents this line. It actually indents it by a tab or by four characters. The indent is very important. Any lines of code indented at this level will repeat forever and ever inside the while true loop. And once we end any indented lines, we loop back to the very first line following our while true statement and repeat that. Now right here, I'm going to write just one line of code, and that's simply the word pass. Now this is a placeholder command, it does nothing. We need to have at least one statement under our while true in order for our program to work. So use pass in your code when a statement is required, but you don't want to perform any additional logic. Now I want to point something else out. Down here in the serial monitor, we see the output for the last time that we saved our code. That was before we added while true. That code ended. We see the message, code done running, and that's when all the red lights went out. It happened very quickly. But now when we save and run the code with our while true loop, we won't see code done running, because our code is in an infinite loop. It'll never be done unless we cut power or unplug the cable or press control C or run the code once again. So with our serial monitor open, let's take a look at what happens when we save. And hey, the CPP lights up in red and it stays red. And because we're in an infinite loop, the while true loop, we never see code done running. Now you might be wondering, hey, what do I need to do in order to stop this from executing? One thing we can do is click down here in the serial monitor, hold down the control key and press C. Control C stops the code from executing. It enters a break because our code stopped, the lights turn off. Our program is no longer running, and if you scroll up, you can see the line number where we stopped our program. Here it says line 10, which makes sense because that's the line in our infinite loop where we repeat over and over again. Now you'll also see a message down here that says you can press any key to enter the REPL. That's R-E-P-L. That's pronounced REPL, and it stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. So if you press any key, you'll see a prompt with three greater than symbols, and this follows information about your current CircuitPython version and the board that you're using. Now the REPL can be used to enter and execute commands one at a time instead of having to write and run a whole program. We'll learn more about the REPL in a future video, but for now, let's get out of the REPL, and we can do that, it says right up here, by typing in Control D, and what that does is it restarts the execution of our code right from the beginning, and that's why we see the CPB light up in red again. So now that we've got this working, why don't we try a few challenge problems? And in the first one, why don't you light up your CPB with just blue lights? So why don't you pause, give this a shot, and when you're done, let's resume the video, and let's see, did you get this right? All you needed to do was to change the color from 255.00 to 0, 0, 0, 255. That's no red, no green, but full on blue. Save this, and indeed the CPB lights up in blue. Now here's another challenge. How would you light the CPB up with purple lights? So pause, give that a shot. And when you resume, let's take a look. One thing that you could do is you could mix the colors. So purple is a mix of red and blue. I'm gonna try 255 comma zero comma 255. Now you might like this purple, but if you wanna experiment with different values, you certainly could do that to try to make the purple look lighter or darker. And for the last challenge, 
why don't you search online to see if you can change the color to orange and then write another program to change the color to aqua. So pause, give this a shot, explore online resources, see what you can come up with, and resume. Let's see how you did. And if you pull up a browser, you can search for RGB colors. One of the first links is this RGB colors chart. So let's click on that. And we see a chart filled with colorful squares. And if I find an orange one that I like, I can just hover my cursor over it. I see this one here has the color 255, 128, 0. So why don't I try that out? And I see that it doesn't match up perfectly with what I thought I saw on screen, but I can experiment with different values. I'm going to try to tone down the green value to just 64. Save that. That looks much more orange to me. So you might find that you experiment with some of the colors that you find initially online. Well, what about our aqua? I'm going to search for RGB aqua. I see this first link here, and this link suggests that I could get aqua from 0, 255, 255. I'll give that a shot. Save it out. And hey, that looks pretty good. So you sparkly Pythonista, I hope you feel good about the big learning you just soaked up. We learned how do we use the import command so that we could import libraries that extend CircuitPython capabilities. And specifically in this lesson, we use the board and NeoPixel libraries. We created a variable to hold an object created from a class. That was our pixel object created from the NeoPixel class. We learned about RGB colors and how to look these up online. We called a method associated with an object. That was the fill method, which turned all of our lights on. And we learned how to create an infinite loop with while true, how to interrupt that loop with control C, and how to restart the execution of our code using control D. So you're really building some CircuitPython skills there, programmer. There's lots more to come. Keep at it.